Well, yeah, election year. I feel like we haven't even been talking about that nearly as much as we should. And Rick Newman, I want to bring you into the conversation on that because it's interesting. Goldman Sachs is actually out with a note this morning, and they were saying that the most significant risk and source of uncertainty is the U.S. election, which is now just five months away. Yeah, and the reason they're saying that is if Joe Biden wins, he has a different agenda than President Trump. He does want to raise some taxes, not everybody's, but he does want to raise uh, the corporate tax, for example, and taxes on the wealthy. However, that was his plan before the coronavirus. And I, I just find it unfathomable to think that any president, Republican, Democrat or otherwise, is going to raise anybody's taxes in 2021 or 2022. I mean, remember, that has to go through Congress and uh, Congress is not going to pass anything that's going to ha- harm the economy at all until it's clear we're out of this. So, um, you know, Joe Biden's tax plan, um, maybe if he won in November and then he served a second term before that, I'm, I have trouble seeing it unless it's 2023 or 2024. We could just go to go back to China for a second. Um, I think markets were really we saw markets shoot up after Trump's uh, short address on China. I think markets are relieved that he didn't really do anything that severe. Um, He basically said, we are going to begin to consider some sanctions. That was uh, far softer than what I think markets had been fearing. Um, I don't think Trump can really do much about China um, until November is over, till we get through the election, because it will affect the stock market. So I think Trump's hands are tied a little bit there. And I think China is going to get a lot worse. Well, let's get more on what President Trump had to say uh, in regards to China today. We want to go down to D.C. for more on this. Uh, Just Smith, you were standing by with us right now. You were closely watching President Trump's uh, press conference earlier this afternoon. He was saying that China's action on Hong Kong was in plain violation of treaty obligations. Right. And we actually just got some more details from the White House about one of the measures that the president announced this afternoon at this event where he spoke to reporters. He said that the U.S. would start suspending entry to some people from China who pose a national security risk. And now, according to this proclamation that we just got from the White House, it looks like that will apply to certain graduate students and researchers from China who have ties to the People's Liberation Army. So we'll still dig through this to learn a little bit more about that, but it looks like it will be effective on June 1st. Now, some of the other policy decisions that the president announced today, he said that in response to this national security law in China, um, he says he's asking his working group on financial markets to study the practices of some Chinese companies that are listed in the U.S. He says the goal is to protect American firms. He also says that he's taking steps to sanction certain Chinese officials. And he says, as Rick mentioned, that he would be taking steps to eliminate um, the special treatment that Hong Kong has. And again, he says this is because of the steps China is taking that um, are eroding Hong Kong's autonomy. Here's, Here's more on how he explained this move. China's latest incursion, along with other recent developments that degraded the territory's freedoms, makes clear that Hong Kong is no longer sufficiently autonomous to warrant the special treatment that we have afforded the territory since the handover. China has replaced its promised formula of one country, two systems with one country, one system. President Trump also spent some of the time this afternoon blaming the Chinese government for the pandemic. That is something we have heard from his supporters on Capitol Hill. He continued to say that today. And in response, he says that the U.S. is going to terminate its relationship with the World Health Organization. Um, So that was another headline that came out of that that event this afternoon. We are set to see the president in the next few minutes as he has another roundtable with industry executives. So if we hear any more about these plans in regards to China, we'll be sure to let you know. All right, thank you, Jeff. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are. 